He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent. While he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a great crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Seize him. And he came up to Jesus at once and said, Greetings, Rabbi! And he kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you came to do. Then they came up and laid hands on Jesus and seized him. And behold, one of those who were with there, there with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? I remember him, and I remember that night. We moved in at night, see? The darkness it gives you the edge, the element of surprise, it allows you to strike fear into the heart of your enemy. We came armed clubs, swords, and a few handmade specialties. We weren't taking chances. His disciples were big blokes, fishermen, Galeans, hard men. They could put up a decent fight if they needed to. The insider showed us the way and identified him. The one I kiss, that was our signal. That way we'd know which one to grab in all the chaos and confusion. I tell you, he may have served our purposes, but I wouldn't want a friend like that. A grass is always the lowest form of humanity. Everyone hates a traitor, even if he's working for you. But you see, the thing is, I was close. I saw what happened, that moment when the traitor kissed Jesus, just before we grabbed him. He said, friend, do what you came to do. And there was a look in his eye, something passed between him and the traitor. Something I can't explain. A look? A look of understanding? Acceptance? I don't know. Seconds later, I was writhing on the ground, and that big gorilla had sliced my bloody ear off. Jesus stopped the violence, though. Told them to put the swords down. Enough is enough, he said. Then he turned to look at us, and asked us why we hadn't come before. Why come now in the darkness, when he'd been out in the daylight preaching in the temple? Good reason for that, of course. We didn't want a riot. We didn't want the crowds getting involved. Not at Passover. Not with all those people there. Places like a tinderbox as it is. I don't know. I don't think that's what he meant. I think he meant we were the darkness. The people of darkness. And even then, as we dragged him away and his friends scattered began to worry about what we were doing, I began to feel ashamed. And that mixed with the pain of my severed ear. What had this bloke actually done? Why were we doing this? But later, when I thought about it, I remembered that look between the traitor and his master, and the weirdest idea came into my head. He can't have planned all this, can he? He can't have known what was going to happen. It was as though he'd willingly gone with us, as if he'd been in charge the whole time. I don't know. But I had the strangest feeling then, and I still have it now. If he hadn't allowed it, our swords and clubs would have been useless against him. However tough we might have thought we were. Who am I that the hands of cruel men take me? 
who am I? That they close in with the shadows, fists grasping torches before jeering faces, swords and clubs to cut my flesh, to break my bones. Abba, Father, your will, your will is done with this bitter cup, would that it would pass. All around me the beasts begin to circle, this night is their time. Who am I? I am the one they want. Who am I? I am the one he kisses. Who am I? I am the one who is borne away and dragged before the rulers. Who am I? I am the one whom in deceitful words they seek to bait, to bind, to trap. Who am I? As I stand before you, seized, shackled, condemned, and know that I will find no pity and can expect no mercy. Who am I? Whose last comfort is found in the lips of a traitor.